Johann Wolfgang Goethe liked to write poetry in plays and novels. In 1821 he wrote Wilhelm Meister's Apprenticeship and Travels. It was translated by Thomas Carlyle in 1839. This is from Book 7, Chapter 9. Art is long, life short, judgment difficult, opportunity transient. To act is easy, to think is hard, to act according to our thought is troublesome. Every beginning is cheerful, the threshold is the place of expectation. The boy stands astonished, his impressions guide him. He learns sportfully, seriousness comes on him by surprise imitation is born with us what should be imitated is not easy to discover the excellent is rarely found more rarely valued the height charms us the steps to it do not with the summit in our eye we love to walk along the plain it is but a part of art that can be taught the artist needs it all who knows it half, speaks much, and is always wrong. Who knows it wholly, inclines to act, and speaks seldom or late. The former have no secrets, and no force. The instruction they can give is like baked bread, savory and satisfying for a single day. But flour cannot be sown, and seed corn ought not to be ground. Words are good, but they are not the best. The best is not to be explained by words. The spirit in which we act is the highest matter. Action can be understood and again represented by the spirit alone. No one knows what he is doing while he acts aright. But of what is wrong we are always conscious. Whoever works with symbols only is a pendant, a hypocrite, or a bungler. There are many such, and they like to be together. Their babbling detains the scholar. Their obstinate mediocrity vexes even the best. The instruction in which the true artist gives us opens the mind, for where words fail him, deeds speak. The true scholar learns from the known to unfold the unknown, and approaches more and more to being a master. And this quote is from Book 7, Chapter 1. The child's desire to have distinctions made in his ideas grew stronger every day. Having learned that things had names, he wished to hear the name of everything supposing that there could be nothing which his father did not know he often teased him with his questions and caused him to inquire concerning objects which but for this he would have passed without notice our innate tendency to pry into the origin and end of things was likewise soon developed in the boy when he asked whence came the wind and whither went the flame his father for the first time truly felt the limitation of his own powers and wished to understand how far man may venture with his thoughts and what things he may hope ever to give account of to himself or others the anger of the child when he saw injustice done to any living thing was extremely grateful to the father as the symptom of a generous heart felix once struck fiercely at the cook for cutting up some pigeons the fine impression this produced on wilhelm was indeed ere long disturbed when he found the boy unmercifully tearing sparrows in pieces and beating frogs to death this trait reminded him of many men who appear so scrupulously just when without passion and witnessing the proceedings of other men. The pleasant feeling that the boy was producing so fine and wholesome an influence on his being was, in a short time troubled for a moment, when our friend observed that in truth 
the boy was educating him more than he the boy.